Today we're going to talk a little bit about harvesting drought stress corn. Eventually the decision is made sometimes when the drought has become so severe that the best salvage value for that crop is to actually cut it for a forage. So we're going to talk about a number of different options here. Now we're assuming that because of corn production and also because of any kind of crop insurance issues that the decision has been made to go ahead and harvest it for forage. There are several options that we can choose. We can look at, for example, actually trying to uh, green chop this field. And we can take that and just chop it directly and, and feed it directly to the animals. One of the concerns with that would be high potential for nitrates, particularly if the uh, lay-by or side dress nitrogen application has already been made. One thing that you need to consider is to make sure that we leave 12 to 15 inches worth of stubble height if we're going to green chop. The importance for that is because in some of these uh, plants, what's actually happened is, is that at the lower part of the stem, more nitrates are concentrated in that region. And so we want to try to reduce the overall nitrate concentration by increasing the stubble height. So we're actually going to cut it a little higher than what uh, we would normally do for, say, for a corn silage field. So a second option that we have is to actually make a hay crop out of this field. Now here again, we have the same restrictions with regard to nitrates, because nitrates will not dissipate in the hay. Again, we need to increase the cutting height so that we're actually reducing the total nitrate concentration. So one thing to consider with hay production, though, is that the cattle actually do pick through the hay a little bit more. So they uh, generally select more leaf material out of that hay. As a result, their actual intake of nitrates are going to be a little bit lower. And as a consequence, we can actually uh, lower our cutting height a little bit more to make it easier for the hay production sequence. Now still, we need to leave about 8 to 12 inches worth of stubble. That's still a lot, particularly if we're trying to make hay uh, in a particular field. So one of the strategies that we can deal with that is to actually windrow the crop as we're cutting it with a mower conditioner. The mower conditioner actually can allow us to windrow that right in behind the crop, right as we're cutting the crop, and will eliminate the need for us to have to go back and uh, rake that. Now the problem with trying to do that with hay is getting it to dry down. Uh, we want to avoid trying to rake this hay because of that extra stubble height is going to make it very difficult. So our objective here is to try to let it cure out in the windrow. Now that's going to take a lot of time. Of course if it's dry and the drought continues we're going to have drying weather that will allow for that. But making hay out of it is a little bit more difficult. So it's important that we use a conditioner, not only because of the ability to windrow the crop, but also because that will break open those stems a little bit more and allow for the moisture to evaporate out of those stems a little bit more readily. So a third option is to actually look at trying to graze the crop. Now this can be a little bit challenging, particularly if we're trying to move animals around. There are two key rules that we need to remember. Never turn them in hungry. And also, don't mob graze it so tightly that we remove the growth down to below uh, six to eight inches. In both of those cases, what actually can happen is the grazing animals can eat so much that if they graze it too closely, they can actually increase the total nitrate intake. And it can actually be such a high level of intake at one time that we end up with a lot of, of, of a flush of nitrates getting into the animal system. Now the grazing preference for these animals as they go out into the field and begin to graze is they're going to take off any, any ears that are there first and the leaf material first. Then they'll start with the tops of the plant and work their way down. So one strategy that we can think about is actually using a technique called frontal grazing where we begin at the very far part of the field where we have water resources and we begin to graze progressively away from that water resource. All we need to do then is just move one hot wire or one front fence further down the, the pasture or the, the field. We don't need to necessarily worry about a back fence in that case. So a fourth option is actually to look at making silage out of the crop. And this is probably one of the best options out of the group that we've talked about. 
one of the reasons that silage is such a superior way of handling this is that it actually reduces the nitrate concentration in the crop and it retains a lot more of the quality. It reduces the amount of time that we actually have to handle the crop as well. So in the process of the fermentation, if the fermentation is actually good, we end up with actual uh, reduction in nitrates of up to 50 to 60 percent. So it's important that we c create conditions that are such that the fermentation is well supported. So one of the challenges of getting silage put up in a, out of a crop like this is that it still needs to be wilted a little bit. Even though this crop is drought stressed, uh, what actually is going to occur is that the moisture level is still going to be about 85 to 90 percent, even if it's beginning to die and brown back and senesce. So we still need to wilt it a little bit before we get down to that optimum of 65 to 70 percent moisture with this crop. So that, again, that can be easily done with a mower conditioner, for example, if we a wind row right behind the mower conditioner as we talked about with the with the hay. So usually that's going to take a matter of a few hours to to wilt down from 85 to 90 percent down to the 65 to 70 percent range. Now one option with this instead of chopping this for silage is we could actually make baled silage out of it. Baled silage uh, makes it a little bit easier to handle this crop Again, with wind rowing it right behind the, the mower conditioner, we can then follow, after a sufficient time has passed for wilting, we can follow in behind with the baler, bale it up, and begin to wrap that with plastic to exclude the oxygen and create silage out of it. In this system, it's still advisable to go ahead and raise that cutter bar up a little bit. We still want to leave about six to eight inches worth of stubble height out there. Again, we're trying to reduce the nitrate levels as much as we can, particularly if we're going to be feeding this into a dairy ration. Regardless of the silage system, it's important for us to allow that crop to actually ferment for three to four weeks before we start uh, feeding that crop if we suspect that nitrates are going to be high. And that's uh, to allow that fermentation process to occur so that it actually reduces the nitrate level in that crop. So regardless of how the crop is harvested, we still need to test the nitrates. Nitrates again can cause some major animal problems and so what we need to do is to assess what the concentration is. Now there are field kits that we can test the nitrates here standing in the field. We can get an idea as to whether or not it's safe or if it's uh, going to be elevated in nitrate levels. But it's important that we quantify exactly how much nitrates are there. And that usually can only be accomplished by taking it to a lab and actually running a nitrate analysis. So that when we develop a ration, we can actually dilute the forage down to a point that it's safe to feed to the animals. It's important that we use a hay core to actually take those samples as well. The hay core will give us a good random sample into that bale so that we uh, get a good cross section of stem, leaf, and other material that is in that bale itself. It's important that we also get a good representative sample throughout the entire field. Some areas of the field and bales made from those certain areas of the field may be elevated in terms of nitrates, whereas other areas may be low. So it's important that we get a good representative sample from across the field. If you have additional questions about harvesting drought stress corn, we encourage you to visit our website at www.georgiaforages.com or to contact your local county extension agent. In the state of Georgia, you can call your county extension agent by 1-800-ASK-UGA-1. That's 1-800-ASK-UGA-1.